remember seeing you all from way back in the days coming over to St. Stephen Southern Indiana. That's where I was first a member. Both of you were very active in ministry, active in the choir. Tell us a little bit about yourselves. Well, I've been at St. Stephen since 1992. Wow. Uh, that's when I joined. I was coming before that. Mm -hmm. But I joined in 1992 and immediately got involved with the choir. Yeah. So I was in the temple choir and then that transitioned into sanctuary choir. I've just been here a long time. Let's backtrack a little bit. Tell me how you two met. <laughs> well, we met in the sanctuary choir. Look at this smile. <laughs> <laughs> And we were having Sunday school one day, and I decided I wanted to ask her out. So I had my friend uh -huh. ask her for a phone number, and she asked me why I wanted her phone number. <laughs> yeah. I was like, yeah. Hey, you think I want phone number? <laughs> One of the things I do remember is how uh, interactive you were with your baby girls. I remember these girls when they were real little. So, what kind of father uh, is DeSantos? All oh, the girls were spoiled. They were spoiled. You know, it's like you tell them, you try to build the rules and everything, and he tries to like sneak them what they don't suppose, what they're not supposed <laughs> to have, and all of that. So, yeah. He's always there at every event they've had, every cheer practice, every uh, belt test, all of that. So he's always there, always present. We exalt you. I'm in all of your grace, Lord, we exalt your name. It will alive, we find our strength. Um, one thing that I often think about is uh, our daughter's birthday was coming up, so she was going to be celebrating with her class. And he would bring in cupcakes and ice cream and stuff like that. And, um, you know, that's one of the last times that we actually saw him, like, standing upright, walking, moving about, um, just being the active person that he was. Your daughters are your heart. They're crazy. <laughs> 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 no, I, I really love my daughters. What message would you have as they watch you go through this journey? I want them to understand I'm not the same person that I was four years ago. I can't be at every event, but I want them to know that I love them. Yeah. And that no matter what, no matter what I go through, they'll always be my babies. Mm. And I always love it. How important a part does your faith play for you in your life? My faith is the most important thing to me in my life. If it wasn't for God, I don't know where I would be. You, know, you talk about us being active in ministry, and a lot of times it's the singing mm. and the praying that carries us through. Right, I've sang, sang all those songs and, and they really ministered to me before I had the stroke, but after the stroke, I think even more so, they've ministered me and helped me get through some really rough and dark times, I think. He lifted me, lifted me through darkest storms. He after I had this stroke four years ago, it was really low. I was 
it was really low point for me. Uh, but my pastor calling and different church members calling and checking up on me and my wife taking good care of me. Wonderful. Really, really helped me. Yeah. So, uh, Catrice, can you kind of tell us the story of uh, surrounding DeSantos and, and how all of this came to be? Um, so, one day he had a headache that he just could not shake. And so, um, you know, he was still going, still going to work. Everything was starting to shut down with the pandemic coming about. It's like, I just can't seem to shake this headache. I have this headache. Uh, he called me, can you come pick me up from work? We'll go to urgent care. So we went to urgent care. He was told he had a uh, vertigo and an inner ear infection. But again, couldn't shake the headache. And he was like, you know, I'm going to Google this because it's just not right. It's not a typical headache. And further tests and all that to confirm that he did, and in fact, uh, have the stroke with him. So he was there uh, for about three days and they sent him home. So we had a home health nurse that came in to kind of help support everything. And from there, um, it just was not the same. Mm. And so um, we eventually had to put him into Fraser Rehab where he was able to do um, some rehab work. But after about five weeks, he was starting to get that strength back. My goodness. So DeSantos, very active in church, active husband, active father. And then you found yourself in a situation as to where almost everything stopped. Talk about that moment. Gosh, it's been a struggle. Yeah. It really has. Um, I'm not the kind of person that ask anybody for anything. I'm the one doing for everybody else. I don't. I don't like to ask people for help. And having to do that has really changed who I am, I think. Uh, and, and what would you say in your time of prayer and reflection? You know, I just, I've seen other people that have had strokes and they're walking and, and I, I really wanted to know why. And that's not something he's ever told me. He's not revealed that to me, the why. But I've come to realize that I don't need to know the why. My spirit soar above the pain Beyond the cloud I found his rain He mended me With mercy's red Gave strength to climb We'll shout his name voices Through him we want Trees when someone and and I am uh, definite my mom suffered from the same situation uh, more than a decade ago and I understand that when a family member goes through this it's not just them it's the entire family what's this been like for you and it's totally changed the dynamics of your family and your life it has it absolutely has um, I think for me if anything it has drawn me closer to God what I think thought I was doing with covering and praying for my family is on a totally different level now. Yeah. Um, just knowing and understanding and getting like we've got some for real spiritual warfare. Yeah. And so um, if anything is resonated within me, I've always been someone that people categorized as strong. Yeah. But um, it's God's strength, mm. and more than ever, I'm determined. And so, your husband has been named this year's Winner's Circle recipient. Could you say any words? I think, um, if anything, God still has a purpose for him. I tell him, you know, every day that God allows him to be here, it's because it's a purpose. Mm. And we got to figure out what that purpose is. We can't stay in the state of where we are right now. How can we move forward? How can we bring glory to God? Well, he went 
Bringing glory to God and to Santos, I'll tell you, on many a Sundays, you've encouraged my heart. To see you raise your hand and praise God, despite of what you've been through. So what would you say to someone that's going through something and you may not have the answer of why this happened to you, but talk about still trusting God in those moments of uncertainty. What I would say to someone, don't give up. Keep pushing. Every day that he gives you life, try to draw closer to him and the people around you that he's given you to love and to show you love, just use that as strength. Use that as fuel to move forward. And the Bible says, when a man findeth his wife, he findeth his good thing. What would you like to say to your good thing? And uh, has this strengthened you too? It really has because she's not only my wife, she has become my caretaker. And I don't want her to think that I take that for granted because she didn't have to do it. Mm. She doesn't have to do it every day. She has to get me up and get me dressed and I don't take that for granted and I don't take it lightly at all. So talk to your wife. What do you want to say to your wife? I can't turn that way my neck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to say it to Every day is a miracle with you by my side. Your laughter and your gentle touch, my ultimate guide. Hallelujah. Your wisdom like a beacon, oh, lights of our home in your eyes. So the winner's circle, we usually honor one person, but I definitely think that as a couple, you both belong in the winner's circle because you are a wonderful example of God's love. You're a wonderful example of continuing to push forward even when it's hard. And again, you don't realize what type of inspiration you bring to the people around you, just seeing you when you come to church and when you lift your hands to praise. And you too, Catrice, when you get up on that stage and you sing from the depths of your heart. And we just want to let you know that we love you, we support you, and we thank you so much for inspiring us. With you, the 